in case anyone knows or wants to know how I film my videos, this is how with a dog on my lap and a cat. Hey, welcome back to my channel. My name is Brooke. Thanks so much for joining today. Today, we don't have the cat. We have the dog here. That's new. So welcome. If you are new here, this is a channel where I talk about house plants and do DIYs on my shorts. So if you haven't, take a minute and subscribe. Also, I am on Instagram now, so I've been posting pretty um, daily. So you can follow me along there too if you want to see daily content of plants and what I do, which it's nothing pretty much. This is it. Anyways, if you are a recurring viewer, thanks so much for coming back. Another video. As we sit here and pet the dog, we're just going to talk about um, winter. So I am in Texas. And so winter, what is winter? Not really winter here yet, but it is starting to get down in temperatures. Um, it for sure feels a little fallish. So I am in the Dallas area. And I realized like, yeah, I need to start thinking about what I'm going to do with my plants that are outside. So if you put your plants outside, which you totally can because these plants come from the outside. So they will lie oh, they will live. They will live and they will survive and they will do a lot better outside than in your home. Spoiler. But I did put um, a few plants outside for the summer. And I think I actually, I don't know, maybe it was before summer. I think I started them in spring. A few of two of them. Two of them are left but two of them are left. Oh, and they are sad and I will show you them. But anyways, um, so you can start putting your plants out when the temperature reaches um, above 50 or 50 or above at night. And it's the same thing in the wintertime when it starts reaching 50 and below, that's time to bring them in, or that means to bring, you need to bring them in. And so here in Texas, um, it doesn't really reach that probably until later this month of October or November. Um, it's, I think the lowest, I think this week is going to be 54 maybe. And so if it's one night of like fifties or below, I'll keep them. It's okay. But it's when the, they consistently become, you know, 50s at night all through the week, then you really need to bring them in. And so this is actually the first year that I have put plants outside. Normally, I just keep them in and don't really um, switch them out because it can be a big process if you have a lot of plants outside and if they are growing well. So there is going to be a transition period for your plant. I would suggest, which is what I suggest putting your plants outside, or if you're going to, is to like slow introduce them to the outside. So your plants, if they have been growing inside, are so used to the conditions in here um, and the stable environment. And so when you move them outside, it's much brighter light. So I know that you think that it's bright light here in this window, but just remember your windows do have a coated covering that protects you, know, you from the light outside. And so there is a big difference. There's no difference between animals. They both want to be cuddled, but there is a big difference when you are transitioning your plant from inside to outside. And so it's the same from outside to inside. Your plants are going to go through a transition period. They're going to probably hit a slowdown um, because they are going to be like, wait, I had full light and really great humidity and where is it? So um, I would just suggest, yeah, maybe slowly backing them away from the light. If yours is in a higher light situation, just slowly back them away. And also you need to be um, mindful about pests. So pests are a big thing like outside that we don't really care about because they're supposed to be there, but we don't want them to be there in inside. And so I would start using a systematic granule, um, you know, like weeks prior to transitioning your plants to the inside and using a, I know people use um, like bug killers around their plant pots, but just like cleaning them off, um, making sure that there are no spiders. My husband was looking at one of my plants outside and dug in the soil and there were crickets in there. And so that's a problem I'm going to have to deal with. And so for crickets, I have no idea how you get rid of those. Scoop them out. I don't know. I guess you can put a a bug killer on them, but I don't know that that's 
going to get rid of them. But anyways, you need to start using something like that. Jack's dead bug brew, spraying down all the leaves, washing them off. And then once you do bring them inside, you need to make sure that you have the same light or equivalent best you can do um, that they were getting outside inside. And so I know that's a common thing is people put them outside again in full great light. Then they bring them inside and they stick them in a dark corner. They're going to die. They're going to die. They're not going to do well because you are completely, you know, putting them on opposite um, spectrums from outside to inside. And so if that means putting them next to a southwest facing window, east facing window, whatever you can, like right up against it, do it. Or you are going to need to supplement with a grow light. And so I have Verena's on um, my setup in here. And then I have Sansy grow lights in my office and in, in the, uh, my living room area. And so those are great options to, you know, just place a light above your plants that have been outside because they're going to need it. Like you would be surprised, I bet, the difference between just this window right here and then being outside um, the light levels they are going to be a lot higher outside so light is the number one I would say important thing that you need to find for your plant inside if you are bringing them in now the other part of that is again with the pest issue I would isolate your plants for a couple weeks because again there could be lingering pests, fungus gnats could be in and you know, their life cycle um, isn't like immediate. So you could have larva in the soil and then they, um, you know, become born. I don't know why I just said become born, but they come out <laughs> and then you will find them in your house and it won't be a great situation. So use your systematic granules. I'll say that, but just note the entire plant becomes toxic no matter what plant it is. If it was a non-toxic plant before, it will become toxic. So don't let your pets buy it, your children, anything like that. But um, bringing them into the light, yeah, isolating them. And then I would say light. Humidity, the humidity is great outside here because it's the south. It's got high humidity. That's why my hair always is frizzy. But um, humidity, I don't really personally pay much attention to that. But if you want to, you can add a humidifier by it to mimic the environment it was getting outside. But those are my tips. Those are like my three short tips for bringing your plants inside. Um, mainly, it's just the light, making sure you have the right light for your plants, because again, they're not going to grow or transition well if you don't have the proper lighting. I will now tell you about my plants that I placed outside at the beginning of summer or end of spring. Not really sure, but I put three or four plants outside. Four plants. I put four plants outside. Two of them died. One of them died almost immediately. And I've already shared it here. So I'll maybe put a video of it up. It's not, not even worth it. But um, it was my string of dolphins. I purchased a string of dolphins at Canton, Texas. Put it outside because I knew that I wouldn't have the highlight situation it would require here or that I would have space for it. So I placed it outside um, actually like right here over here, the dog, um, in a south like west area and yeah it died quickly um it was already dying inside it didn't have highlight and i just transitioned at 100 percent, just threw it out there and it died and so i won't be bringing that with me because it's gone. It, I already threw it away. I did not keep it, but my sister has kept hers outside all spring, summer, and currently it's outside and it's doing great. It's grown so big and long and blooming. Um, so she has a better care for the string of things because I just don't have that in me. But that was one I placed out. And then the other one I placed out, just dumbly, um, was my, my, what was it? Staghorn fern. There we go. I did a Kokodama staghorn fern and it survived. However, again, um, if you're transitioning your plants, plants outside from inside, I would really highly suggest, take my own advice, please, um, transitioning them out. So that means placing them out uh, at different times in the day, like for maybe an hour, maybe two hours, maybe three hours, but not just like throwing them out there. To the wolves because that's what I did. I threw it out there to the wolves in the highest light. So I would suggest maybe like morning light or afternoon light, you know, just sticking it out there, not the brightest part of the day. Because what happened was they shriveled up, immediately shriveled up and died. I might have a video on this because I did take it and I planned on sharing it, but 
I, I don't remember. I think I have it. I'll put it here. But yeah, I placed it outside at the brightest time. Shriveled died. So I transferred it to the front of my house and I put it, which is like a north facing. Yeah, I think it's north facing. And so no, that didn't help it because then I forgot to water it. And so that guy, I just threw had my husband throw away like this week because it was dead. It was gone. It was gone. It's good experiment. Um, Kokodamas work. Like I've had my plants in Kokodamas before, but inside. Oh so it was an experiment, an experiment that didn't last. So those were the two plants that completely just are not coming back inside because they're not there. Now, two plants that are coming back inside. So I have a flapjack, which is a succulent. I wanted to try it because House Plus Plants has a really large one. It's very beautiful. I'm not really great at keeping succulents alive, but I stuck this guy out immediately. I did not have him inside. I just stuck him outside. I bought it at Lowe's outside, put it outside, and it's actually done very well. And so I will show a, like a before and after video of that because I do have that, I know. And so um, I just bought this for like $7 at Lowe's and it's grown so much and it has two new pups. And so it's really exciting. Again, it sits um, in our back like patio area. So Southwest facing window. Now I will tell you the light has changed fall, you know, fall lighting has come. And so it does get a lot more direct light. And I noticed that it uh, reacted to that. It was sitting like semi, like probably just like bright indirect light and now it's direct light. And so some of them have become crispy and... Okay, my mic died, so we're gonna try to remember. But my flapjack, um, it, yeah, the light situation changed and so some of the leaves have fallen off, but it's okay, it has two new pups growing. And so what I'll do is just um, spray it down with Jackson Bug Brew and probably use mosquito bits and then put it back inside underneath my Sansy Grow Light in my office and call it a day. I'm not gonna really worry about that one too much. They're pretty hardy plants, but if you did, the animal's still here. If you do have it outside and you know you notice the light change in the season, excuse me, excuse me, um, I would just maybe move it with the light. And so if you are noticing that the leaves are starting to fall off or brown, just move it back a little bit with the light, not do what happened to mine, which is just, you know, fall off. It's okay. Again, the plant's doing really well. So um, that is the first one that I'm actually going to bring inside. And then the second one is my ficus um, elastica. Why did I, couldn't remember that. My rubber tree. And I don't know if it's a Mel Milani or it's just a burgundy one, but I put it outside originally because it was getting spider mites. And I am, if I'm given the option to throw the plant away that has spider mites or treat it, I'm probably going to throw it away. But in this case, I just chopped it all the way back and it actually started to grow. It, so it gave out a new um, shoot from the very bottom. And then my dog ate the leaves. So once as she freaks out over here of her tail, but she ate the leaves that died. However, it is starting to sprout out off the top and I will show a video of it. And so it is coming back to life. It's growing slowly. I did repot it as well uh, because it had grown outgrown the pot that it was in. Wow, I cannot talk now. Originally in, but um, it's doing well. I have high hopes for it, but I have high hopes that it will come back, make a comeback. But I'm not really sure where I'm going to place that one because it is in a very large pot and it does require an extreme amount of light. And so I don't know. I'm also not going to transition that one back in because it's literally just a stump. It is just a tree. It's just what if my mother-in-law came over and she saw it and she's like, oh, the stick's growing. Yeah. Yes. It's literally just a stick. There's no foliage on it at all whatsoever. It's sad, but it is growing. It's doing really well. So I'm going to need to find a place for that one, but I'm just going to move it in because I'm not even going to bother transitioning a stick back and forth inside. There is no point to that at all whatsoever, but I will spray it down with Jackstead Bug Brew. I'll spray off around it and then I will treat it um, with mosquito bits as well. So if any fungus larva is in the soil, it will kill them. But yeah, that's pretty much what I have to bring in like there's nothing else so those were the two plants that I tried out I will put them back out um, next year I think that they did really well especially my flapjack um, it growing to new shoots was very good um, I bought that originally I think I said this maybe I didn't maybe it was the first time but from the out outdoor section and just put it outdoors and so it did not have any like indoor time so this will be the first time that's indoors but hopefully it just keeps 
consistent and I can keep it alive until next year. As far as winterizing my house plant routine, I don't. I don't move my plants away from the window. I don't stop water watering or slowing down on my watering. Um, I just keep it consistent as I would any other day because your indoor settings not changing. Um, you will, might find that you're actually watering them a bit more because you're turning your heat on. So that's going to dry the soil out. I know most people say that you're going to be, be watering more in the summer, which is also true, but I don't find that I am watering more or less in either season. I, it just stays pretty consistent. And so I don't worry about my plants next to the windows. I don't move them back. I don't move them closer to the light. Now these I have under grow lights. Um, but I don't try and do any of that. I just keep them as is and they've always done well. And that's including when I lived in Washington state where it was very cold um, and it got, you know, actual winter and so snow. But here I don't do anything. I just keep them as is and go about my day and not try to fuss with them too much. Um, otherwise, that's all I got. Those are my tips for you. So if you are bringing your plants in, I would start looking at your weather, making sure that you're not keeping them out there for consistent like 50s. Definitely bring them in. Again, if it is like 50 one day, not going to hurt them. Um, it was 54 or something, I think, last week, and I kept it outside, and they're doing fine. So once it starts to hit the 50s, I will bring them in, and I will place them. Again, just making sure you have the adequate light that they need, and I, it should be fine. And then you just wait until next year, next spring, summer, and place them back out. So if you like this video, make sure to like it and subscribe to my channel. Otherwise, we'll see you next time.